I've been thinking a lot recently about what makes a masterpiece and if it would ever be possible for AI to create a artistic masterpiece in the same way as we define a human masterpiece. Would we give it that accolade if it did create a piece of meaningful art that really affected people on a deep level? But then I realised that even if an AI did, we wouldn't be able to see past the novelty of the now to predict how it will be regarded by history. Many of the amazing AI examples that have blown us away over the last 12 months have quickly lost their impact. In fact, now when people see detectable AI in creations, they get increasingly frustrated. And there is a fashion to every age and working out what will be timeless is really impossible as you go through it. In this rise of AI, more people are talking about old great masterpiece paintings like those done in the Renaissance with a new kind of found respect that has been kind of missing for about half a generation. Every 10 years or so, people say painting is dead. And I find it fascinating. I rewatched a documentary 30 five years ago it was made by the BBC that again declared done and it could no longer speak to a generation and it showed a fantastic exhibition which featured the likes of what were at the time the young British artists, the Damien Hursts and their pickled sharks, the Tracy Emmons and their unmade beds and it was seen as this new revolution in art and, how, and there were a few painters there one of which was Peter Doig and he was vastly overlooked his paintings were considered old hats. He was a dinosaur. I don't think I was the one, I don't think I was the roommate of choice. 30 years later, when we revisit and look at those three artists, of all of them now, the person whose art sells for the most is Peter Doig. And even more interestingly, they're all still working today. And in their late careers, the latest exhibition by Hearst and by Emin were both of their paintings. These conceptual artist agent provocateurs of the 90s painting. What I really admire about Doig is back then when he was interviewed about the next greatest big thing and all these contemporary masterpieces, he stated that there is no such thing as a modern masterpiece. There's no such thing as a... a a, a masterpiece, a contemporary masterpiece, you know, that can't be decided by within your own time, really. As AI encroaches, it's only really the digital artists who seem vehemently against it. The cries of stealing may or may not be valid, but there is no denying that AI is able to construct images that closely match their output. Traditional artists obviously don't care so much. Traditional painting and sculpting doesn't have the same utility in today's creative economy, otherwise be sure something would be coming after that too. Digital artists see these traditional artists often as snobby, elitist or economically unrealistic, often old-fashioned, and traditional artists see their digital peers as designers and illustrators who are often too cartoony or fantasy obsessed and therefore can't offer any value to the real tangible world. Yet all of us started with real world pigments on a paintbrush when we were three. And really there's no division because the greatest living painters in this country also happily explore digital as it's simply another way to make images. The best example of this is David Hockney and his iPad drawings that he blew up five foot high and put around the Royal Academy in 2016. Not something you'd expect from a traditional artist in their 70s. I began drawing on an iPad uh, and I loved it. Everything is at your fingertips. There's no cleaning up. I saw a new medium actually, yes, yeah. Uh, I, don't, I don't care about trends. <laughs> The risks of AI for commercial artists is there, just as it is for writers in all creative fields. However, it does not risk taking the desire to make art. It at worst risks destroying or drastically changing the commercial incentives and avenues to make art. And yes, if that's your job, that's a vital topic. Yet the fact AI can produce perfect digital images and films is not going to stop the desire to explore ideas by creating images, just as it isn't going to stop every three-year-old wanting to draw with crayons. If someone said that AI can now do yoga, walk in nature, sing in the shower and do meditation better than you, it wouldn't stop you doing it. 
I think people are far too focused on defining the value of art economically. The artistic economy is all I hear about when people speak about AI in this field. There is very little about any artistic philosophy. Art can never be for someone else. It's simple. Its value is so far from anything that can be defined in dollars, and that's the beauty of why it exists. It is about finding that thing within you that burns to be explored and trusting in that. If it resonates with you and you wish to share it, it may resonate with others too, but it must always come from you. This concept of only making art for you applies to all art forms. Always remember that the reason that you initially started working was that there was something inside yourself that you felt that if you could manifest it in some way, you would understand more about yourself and how you coexist with the rest of society. And I, I think it's terribly dangerous for an artist to fulfill other people's expectations. I think they produce, they generally produce their worst work when they do that. The future is online. Many of these things are going to continue in that direction as they should, because that is the age we live in. But if you walk into a home now and you see prints of famous artworks, you might think that person is artistic and understands about great artwork. But really, those prints are not those paintings in the same way that the representations on your screen are not those paintings. It's far more interesting to walk into a home and see local artwork by artists who maybe are not as great, but mean something to that person. Their children's sketches on the wall, that silly game they did with their friends of Pictionary at Christmas kind of popped up and framed on the kitchen counter. It just tells you so much more. And that's what has been lost in the digital space about the power of art. And now as all of those images can be mimicked and recreated by AI, I think that fundamental reality of drawing and painting is gonna have a new, renewed, profound effect on the culture. I don't know if anyone agrees with me. You know, I might be just wanting to see what I, what I hope to see, but, but I don't think I'm wrong. And I'm interested to know if, if you think I am. Things are gonna get weird. <laughs> and uh, I really truly believe that painting is gonna help. Time will tell. So let's see. Exciting, isn't it? I remember when people were telling me, oh, you don't have to draw now. I said, well, just tell that three-year-old there and see what they say about that, telling them you don't have to draw. Uh, they just laugh at you. <laughs>